Welcome to Being in Bracket Factory and welcome to the latest uh, episode in the RAG Austin 7 Special Front Suspension Saga. So first episode I did some stuff and then there was two and then there was three and there was four when they made the links. So this episode is all about the steering, uh, particularly the steering arms and the track rods. So let's get to it. So now I'm going to start looking at the steering, uh, particularly the steering arms and the track rod. Now I haven't actually finished um, making these radius uh, arms uh, and that's because I've actually changed this design. So this is the original link and this is the new link that I'm making and it's going to be bigger and beefier and uh, using a better grade of steel. So I'm waiting, waiting for more material for that to, to kind of remake these bits this hole's going to be bigger, there's going to be a bigger tube through the middle of there, it's all just going to be bigger. Uh, and I'm, I've decided to do that after seeing a load of racing cars uh, last weekend, and everything's much more substantial, so I think bigger is better really with these little tiddlers. Anyway, more about the actual steering, so these are the standard um, stub axles, and over here we've got one showing the steering arm, and this is a standard Austin 7 steering arm. It's about the, the length of my uh, my finger. It's a tiny little thing. Um, and that is half the problem, I think. So if we do look down, we can see the steering has to go, um, the track rod has to go through there, through that tiny gap, and out the other side. And this is the track rod I made before. Now, as you can see, it's got a big kink in it. And I put these massive gussets in there to stop the whole thing flexing, but it still flexes. It's acting as a strut uh, under compression and it, it bends. I can still bend it quite easily, although it's pretty chunky grade steel. Um, so the plan is extend the steering arms so they come out much further, possibly as much as twice as long and go have a straight track rod through the side of there. So in order to kind of make space, I'm going to have to take the rad out, take the side panels out and just work out where my track rod's going to go. Before I, I put the radiator in and then weave the track rod around it, which is the wrong way to do it. I should have put the track rod in first uh, and then worked out where the radiator was going to fit. So uh, because the handling is obviously very important. So first step now is to remove the side panels which means removing the exhaust and taking off the rad and basically removing half the flipping car anyway that's what we're going to do now So the rad has now been removed, and as are the side panels obviously, and we can see what we've got to play with. And there's actually a big, a big gap there. So all we've got to do is get a track rod going through there. Now obviously the radiator has to go back in again, but what I might do is I might put it in front of this flange here, this flange here. There's just enough room. It's actually a, a mini A-series, highly modified um, radiator. There it is there, and I think it's probably narrow enough to fit in front. But to be honest, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to worry about getting the suspension and steering right first, and then I'll, then I'll worry about the radiator. 
I could always make a different radiator um, and I can also always I can possibly remove some of this flange here and have the radiator sitting in front of in the middle of the flange rather than in front or behind anyway so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mock up what the track rod would look like I'm going to turn up some some stubs some steering arm stubs that come out of here one at each end and stick it in situ and see how it looks and decide how long I want these steering arms to be and we'll also discuss the pros and cons of long steering arms so here it is this is all mocked up so I've made these steering arms um, very basic steering arms all I've done is machined up this part of a bar and stuck it through and I've made one at each end and I put in place where the track rod is going to go and as you can see it's now nice and straight and it misses this nose just here now uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, fit over there is a pressure fed nose for a pressure fed crank and that will that sticks out a bit further so uh, I'm just going to make sure this uh, this um, track rod doesn't hit that nose but it allows me to have um, a straight track rod which is obviously the most important thing for me now this is the original so this is uh, the distance from there to the center is three and a half inches on the one I'm making it's going to be almost double six inches or maybe five and three quarter inches depending I haven't finalized that distance yet so question is what is the benefit of longer track rod sorry what is the benefit of longer steering arms so for me the important thing is to get a straight track rod why is that important because something is straight is very difficult to bend when it's under compression um, if it's got a bend in it already then any compression uh, it's quite easily makes that bend even worse but it's quite hard to start the bend in the first place so having it straight is pretty fundamental secondly um, because the lever arm is twice as long it means the forces are halved even less likely to deflect under compression that this strut uh, because the lever is twice as long um, you've got the effect of any backlash in this in this pivot here is halved in terms of the amount of angle change of the steering it means the forces are halved that means the wear is going to be halved um, also the track rod the track is adjusted using a, a, a track rod end with threads on it obviously one complete revolution takes you a certain distance about about uh, a millimeter uh, if the length is twice as long it's going to have half the effect uh, on the angle of steering so you've got a more sensitive adjustment disadvantages are that this is obviously heavier significantly heavier than that but that is also potentially an advantage as well because uh, the heavier the steering the heavier the components the higher the resonant frequency of the whole assembly is which means it's less likely to kind of flutter and vibrate at, at higher speeds so that all said and done it's probably not a massive surprise to see that this is what the works car looks like this is the works side valve from about 1932 or 34 or something and lo and behold it has a straight track rod and nice long steering arms so I've not invented anything new here I've just copied what was done almost 100 years ago so um, by the looks of it actually those steering arms are longer than six inches they're dirty great big things they go almost out to the wheel rim um, so anyway not going that big so the next step now is to um, start turning this into something which resembles uh, a steering arm oh, in fact both of them so that's next up <laughs> Right, so I've done some machining and I made these two and obviously that corresponds to that and that corresponds to that. This is going to be mill flat. It's going to have a hole in there and it's going to be radius down there. But 
if you look at this one this one has comes at an angle and that is to prevert, uh, preserve the Ackerman angle so that when uh, when you steer if they're at an angle like that you have the, the, the inside wheel turning more sharply now as it stands these aren't bent and what I could do is I could bend them it would take some bending I could bend them and I would have Ackerman angles but that said there are quite a lot of cars racing out there with reverse Ackerman and they're actually running these things facing forward so you, you're getting a completely you're getting um, this effect whereas the outside wheel is turning more than the inside wheel sounds bonkers but actually that's what they're doing in formula one so what am i going to do i'm going to leave them exactly as they are and uh, i'm going to try it i'm going to make these i'm going to try it and see what it feels like and if i, I can either go to positive ackerman or negative ackerman uh, but i'll cross that bridge when i do it uh, when, so i'll cross that bridge when i come to it um, so for now I'm going to mill, mill these mill these flat now and um, put holes in the end. Quick update, so I've now drilled the hole in the end of there. That drill, uh, that hole is half inch and it accepts this bush and this is the this the track rod end pivot bush and here are the are the pins which go through and we have to ream those uh, so that's going to be an interference fit in there that's, i'm going to press that in and then when i've done that i'm going to um, take the end off uh, but i've got to stick it in a four jawed chuck obviously because it's it's not round anymore so which means changing the chuck which is ball rake so finish that one drill the hole, get those to be the same, and then uh, I can take the ends off and press these bushes in, so that's next. So I've faced off one of them uh, in the fore jaw, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press that into there. It's an interference fit, so I shouldn't need anything, I should probably just get away with using the vise, so I'm just going to heat this up with a hot air gun because uh, a bit of a bit of heat doesn't do any harm uh, and um, see if we can't uh, press the thing in let's do that So they're both pressed in now, that went in all quite nicely. So two operations left. So this is the original, and this is the little cotter pin. Well actually it's not the cotter pin. That's the cotter pin, and this is the this is the steering arm pin. And uh, what you need to do is you need to ream out these because it doesn't fit. So somewhere I have a reamer, so I have to need to ream these two holes out and you gradually make the hole slightly bigger until it actually goes through and it's a nice tight sliding fit but with no perceptible wobble and the other job of course is to put a thread on here so this is a half, half inch bsf so i've got a half inch bsf tap so i'm going to stick that in the lathe and um, only stick it in the lathe to, to hold it and then i can try and uh, wind that thread on so two more jobs to do I'm just setting up to do the thread on this and the tricky bit is actually starting the thread using this bad boy. Uh, so what I've done is a little trick, it's not my trick I'm sure, I can't be the first person to do this, 
is put a, basically a very subtle one degree taper on that to about five mil in. So I've just set this up to be one degree out. Put a very, very fine taper on, which will help me help me start the thread. So I've started the thread with difficulty, and all I do now is basically just pull down on this and it will gradually cut the thread. So thread is now cut on on both of them um, and is rather nice. So all I need to do now is ream them both. And now they are both being reamed. And as you saw, it's a bit of a fiddly trial and error process, but that is now a nice tight fit in there with no perceptible backlash. So that's that's rather nice. So these are now finished. And um, standing back and look at looking at them in the cold light of day, I could maybe do with a little bit more meat around this, this joint. It's not as meaty as that, but Remember the forces through here are effectively now halved. If this thing's going to break anywhere, it's going to break just there. And that is why I've got this big 45 degree chamfer on it. Otherwise, if it was 90 degrees, you'd have a real stress concentration in there. So this is nice 45 degree chamfer. Um, interestingly, the uh, I will show in another clip, the um, stub axle has got a very nice 45 degree um, chamfer to accept this although the standard part doesn't have such a chamfer so um, weight wise it is that's 370 grams that's 170 grams so reassuringly heavy um, I'm not really bothered about that many grams I'll just eat a few less burgers I'm really that worried about weight but I, I, I like the weight because it's going to give the the, the, the steering a, a much more solid feel so uh, all I need to do now is uh, stick these on the car and um, make a track rod which is going to be a damn sight easier than last time that's for sure so as I said the track rod bit is quite easy so I chopped off the ends of the track rod uh, because this um, Saves me trying to cut this thread uh, in a bit of tubing, a bit lazy. Machined up this little adapter. That goes in there, nice tight fit. That goes into a length of tubing. And that screws on there like that. So in true Blue Peter style, here's one I prepared earlier. So this is my, this is the other end of the track rod. So all I need to do is stick this end in here like that and there's my track rod uh, obviously I need to weld it up so I'll, I'll machine um, a little chamfer on there run a weld around there jobs are good in so uh, right time to stick it all on the car see what it looks like so here it is fitted in all of its glory so what is quite good about it and I, I must admit I didn't even realize this is going to be the case is that because um, this uh, arm sits behind the center line of the kingpin I do still get Ackerman geometry and I can tell that because if I go at full lock I can see that the the track rod 
is not parallel with the front. Uh, you can see this, this gap is closer here than it is there. So I'm getting a, a sharper turn on the inside than the outside. So to be honest, I'm absolutely chuffed with that. that that's absolutely fine. The, the run of the track rod in this space is fine. Obviously, I've got plenty of clearance there. That's going to come out another 12 mil or 15 mil. So I've still got plenty of clearance. Um, uh, at full lock, it doesn't hit this frame. Uh, interestingly, at full lock, that hits that. Now, it's actually better than it was before because before I had this one, which is angled in, so that hit it earlier. So I've actually got even more lock than I had before. Everything's beefier. I've got a straight track rod. All good. Quite pleased with that. So I think that's about it for this episode. Um, the next episode, though, I'm still working on the steering because I'm just moving bits out of the way. I'm going to be working on this thing. So this is the this is the, the, the steering arm which is attached to the end of the drag link. Now that's fine apart from the fact one it's very short and uh, weedy. Well A it's very weedy. Um, a lot of you see a lot of modifications where this is braced back to there but I, I don't want to do that because B it's too short anyway. Um, so I'm going to make something much more substantial and longer. Um, so that's what the next episode is all about. I've designed it, it's all in my head. Um, so what are my challenges to turn what's in my head into some bits of metal. So if you're interested in seeing that, hit subscribe and you'll get notified about when I embark on that little mission. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.